at the end of the day, that man, that woman is a human being. Mm-hmm. And my goal is to learn about them. Hey, we can agree to disagree, but we're going to find common ground. And not reaching had us find some common ground. Welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, a show about adoption, foster care, advocacy, and becoming the best caregiver possible. Pull up a chair. We're glad you've joined us. Here are your hosts, Mike and Kristen Berry. Hey, friends, welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. And um, we actually are real, I mean, we love all the episodes we get to do because this is just such an amazing opportunity for us to talk uh, to amazing people from all over the world. But here's the deal. We have a very special guest uh, from uh, an organization that we have been um, following, but also utilizing resources from for um, the past year. And I'm going to let you tell all about who that is. Yes. So that's our new friend, Jackie Carter. Yep. I, I was hoping she'd be our friend, but I, I think I, she is. I think she's. We our had friend. a good talk. So we had a good talk. She said, "Stay in touch." That means we're oh, friends. Oh yeah. Yeah, Jackie, you are a friend. We, you are, we are friends. <laughs> this is our new We're friend, friends. yeah, Jacqueline Carter from the Alliance for Safe Traffic Stops dot org. Yep. that's where you can find um, a whole bunch of information about work that she's doing, and a product that she created called Not Reaching. Yes, and we're just really excited to share this episode with you, and for you to get yeah. to listen in on um, just what a creative problem solver. Jackie is. She really is. Um, so that's that's coming up here in just a moment. Listen, I want to tell you, we, we talked about this last week, but um, our good friend Jeff Noble has just wrapped up. He's actually just about to wrap up this amazing free workshop he's doing called the Caregiver Kickstart FASD Workshop. And he's actually about to open the doors to his full-fledged coaching program that helps caregivers who are parenting children with a fetal alcohol spectrum disorder learn valuable strategies to parent in the best way possible. All of that information is over in the show notes. Um, You can sign up for free for the live workshop. um, And then we're going to tell you all about the coaching program coming up. All of that is over in the show notes. And if you're brand new to the show, make sure you check out honestlyadoption.com slash podcast. Learn more about what we do at Honestly Adoption. We are so glad you're here. And now on with the show. Well, Jackie, welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. It is absolutely awesome to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor for me as well. So I am in particular pretty excited to have you <laughs> on our program because um, I'm I'm sort of fangirling here because I am. <laughs> she fangirls a lot. She does. Fangirl. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> I am because I, I just, I'm, I'm really excited to, to virtually meet you face to face. Um, I'm excited about the products you've created and, mm-hmm. you know, just with that comes from a heart of, of problem solving. And mm. I think yes. we are yep. a foster and adoptive family and that's what we do. Um, right. all day long, every day as a parent, you're problem solving, you're looking yes. at a situation and saying, you know, what, what is the way that I can do this better? Um, how can I provide resources for my kids? How can I support my kids? Well, and you've created something really unique. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff to talk to you about too, but let's start with this. Um, because I have been waiting for a reason to, um, ask you to be on our podcast. And when we came up with this series, which is just resources, Mm -hmm. um, you popped into my mind and you yeah. were here. So the first resource, let, let's talk about that. You created mm-hmm. a product and I purchased that product. Can oh, you tell you. us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I created in 2016, the not reaching pouch uh, that was created uh, on July 6th of 2016, when Philando Castile was fatally uh, mm. wounded, murdered by a police officer, uh, Officer Yanez, in Falcon Heights, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Um, That day actually was my son's 30th birthday. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, we had already had so much civil unrest that Mm -hmm. just something resonated with me that night. 
um, can't can't even put into words the feeling I had. Mm -hmm. I just remember turning to my husband and said, we got to do something. Mm. Yeah. And so I am a woman of faith and I started praying. I was like, I remember the prayer specifically. And I said to God that look, if you just give me something that I can do, I promise I'll do it to the day I die. But we got to have a solution. And, you know, a couple of weeks only went by. And I next thing I know, I woke up in the morning. I looked at my husband. And I said, I got it. He was like, you got what? I said, I got it. So I sketched it out, talked to him about it, started talking to my uh, some of my law enforcement friends, asking them, you know, what does it make you nervous doing traffic stops? What, you know, what causes this heightened alert? Everyone said reaching. Mm -hmm. So we created a pouch. We, you know, had Velcro on it. That didn't work. We put it on one part of the car. That didn't work. And finally, we came up with the pouch and the magnet and called it not reaching because we wanted to do what police said they didn't, you know, they wanted us to do not to reach. So um, we created the not reaching pouch. It's a vehicle identification pouch that clips to your driver's side air vent, and it holds all of your documents, your license, registration, and insurance. So when an officer comes to your car, you're not reaching. Mm. And that's wow. the essence of not reaching. Well, I I found not reaching. Um, I don't really know how I found it. Roundabout way. Either. <laughs> right. Um, but we, we are a multiracial family also. And as our, our middle children mm -hmm. became, um, teenagers started to be, you know, out in the world and navigating things in a different yeah. way than, um, they had, um, well, really navigating racism in a different way than they had, yeah. Uh, yeah. not that that did not exist in the elementary mm -hmm. years, but, oh, sure. um, but we were with them most of the mm -hmm. time. So there was always this feeling like if I jump in, if I step in, if I can um, make something different or safer for them. Uh, then there was the realization as they hit those middle school years, they're going places by themselves. They're, mm -hmm. you know, attending school and after school activities. And, um, you know, our kids attend school in the city. And so uh, the school that they go to does these incredible things. We're walking down to the war memorial. We're going to, you know, walk around yeah. the circle. We're going to do all these things. And you start realizing I can't go. And I, and, and I can't, I can't stop somebody from harming other people, even with yeah. my presence, but exactly. realization that mm -hmm. my kids are growing up and that, yeah. um, you know, for me, the other layer of um, my being white is not going to protect them in the real world. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that will absolutely not show up mm -hmm. in a situation yeah. um, where they might be harmed. Nobody's going to care who their mom is, and where she mm -hmm. is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As we came face to face with that, that was kind of digging through, you know, well, what can we do? What can we do? And mm -hmm. um we were having those conversations with our daughters as they were learning to drive. What are you going to do? Where is that item? Where do you keep uh -huh. it? Mm -hmm. um, keeping mm -hmm. all of that information in the side pocket in the car where the garbage also ends up going, you know, that yep. ends up, you know, maybe exactly. you have it in your hand and ready, but you know, or maybe you accidentally mm -hmm. threw it out at McDonald's. So yeah. we were yeah. kind of processing through, you know, how do we find that? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, coming across this product, we thought, oh my gosh, that's the thing. That's, mm -hmm. you know, w will it solve all the problems? No, um, nope. but is it one resource, one layer? It's a big step, big yeah. step. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I always say it takes away that excuse of, yeah. of yes. they were reaching. Yeah. Um, oh, I saw this movement because, you know, you have to look at both sides. And, if you are an officer who is a human being walking up to a, a situation you don't know and you see all of this and this, this is sure. you don't, a lot of movement. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I am not anti anyone or anything right. or any entity. This is this is also to protect the law enforcement officer. So yeah. if, if you keep your hands on, is it nine? Is it nine and three? It's not three. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know what it is now. now. <laughs> right. Ten yeah. and two, nine and three. And all that will yeah. um, until that officer comes to the car. And you, I first time ever stopped in my life was in 2017. I had a rental car. 
And I was in my hometown. We, we actually are from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. So we moved here six years ago. Um, and we had a rental car and I didn't know I didn't have my lights on. And I see these blue lights. Right. I'm like, oh my God. I, you know, but I have my not reaching couch. So the officer comes to the car. It's like license registration. I said, officer, I am not reaching. My hands are on the wheel. You, I'll give you permission to take the not reaching couch. Mm. Mm. And he took it off and he was like, well, what is this? And great conversation was to be had. Yeah. And um, he he loved it, you know, and it was it it really brought about a really good conversation. Yeah. You know, and at first when he first saw it, he was like, I don't like this. And I was like, why? He was like, because, you know, this has, this is like anti-police. I said, no, no, no. It's I'm not. Like, yeah. This is pro-police. If you, if you look at it the right way. And, you know, we just had more conversation about it. The next thing I know, he was like, boy, I wish we were on, uh, what's that, live PD <laughs> right now. This is great. You know, so it gave us an opportunity to talk. Yeah. Which is yeah. which we're, we're missing right now. So, you know, and he heard my side, I heard his side, and here we were had common ground in the middle. Yeah. I, I think it's really just, I'm just reflecting on what you said um, a few moments ago and just what you said now. Mm -hmm. The fact that you went to law enforcement uh, mm -hmm. when you were researching this idea, when mm -hmm. you were um, contemplating this idea, I think it's really powerful because like you said, we live in this polarized society where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're on this side or you're on this side, you're against that yeah. person. You're, and I think it's really powerful that this product was created out of a heart for all that all people are safe. Absolutely. That, yeah. that yeah. is moving. And especially um, the fact that you went to law enforcement, you know, to yeah. say, Hey, I mean, tell so, us, go, speak, speak go into where this. the problem where the problem was. right yeah right so why wouldn't i go to you and say hey what can we do to alleviate this issue yeah and everyone said the same thing and it was like okay it's a plastic pouch and a magnet like yeah but it's so much more than that and yeah. you know just coming a couple years after that when we moved here i think 2016 2018 i met valerie castile for the first time mm. Orlando's mother. we actually met talked and now she's on my board of my nonprofit. And she's an amazing woman who just wants change. She's not anti-police. After what happened to her son, you would think she would be. Yeah. 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 Um, and but she's trying to work on solutions. And look, we're as far as I'm concerned, I had had this conversation at an event I was at last night. I don't even want to talk about problems. You know, there is literally a profit in problems. The media thrives off the problem. They mm -hmm. want to hear the bad story. They want to hear this, that, and the other. They don't want to hear solutions. Yeah. They really don't. They the mass media does not want to hear about. Oh, yeah. we created something. You know, um, I it gives event. them nothing to talk about. It it, it gives it's them such as their their com which we probably need to do. You know, yeah, <laughs> right. Honest, yeah. Right? yeah. And, you know, and it is, and it's it's really a shame. That yeah. we're at this point. Um, and you mentioned something, you know, I don't like the polarization that is about. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, that man, that woman is a human being. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to learn about them. Hey, we can agree to disagree, but we're going to find common ground. And mm -hmm. not reaching had us find some common ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's um, an incredibly more grace giving response than mm -hmm. I think I have been feeling mm -hmm. in my heart. So um, mm -hmm. I, I can very much appreciate that you said that. Yeah, it took uh, a while. I didn't start that way. When when right. I created not reaching, I was angry. Yeah. 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 I'm not even, Absolutely. I can't lie about that. I was very angry. Yeah. I was, I was, it, it was a bitterness. Mm -hmm. And it actually, my husband actually finally said to me, like, your posts are very, very divisive. And he said, you should watch that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Fight the power. You know, <laughs> I'm not angry. You know, that's the police and all that stuff, you know. And I'm like, and I thought about it. I was like, no, he's right. But you yeah. you can't, you know, you can't make any headway if you're always butting heads. Yeah. And that's when I was like, okay, that's enough of that. You know, I got it out of my system. Okay, now what's the solution? Mm -hmm. Not Not the solution, but a solution. Because, you know, people say, well, what's the end game for not reaching? The end game for not reaching is that not reaching no longer exists. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like I want it to be a relic 
in the yeah. African American Museum in DC where somebody's like, hey, what yeah. my grandma, what's that thing there? <laughs> well, oh, it's that not reaching belt they used back in uh, 2020. You know, we don't have that right. anymore because we have such a great, you know, relationship between law enforcement and police. I, I truly believe we can get there. Yeah. It's gonna take a while. And not, it won't be in my lifetime. I know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I, I am optimistic because of the law enforcement officers. I deal with on a daily basis. They want change too. They do. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and, and I very much resonate with the idea of making steps while change is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, because we really can throw our hands up and say, you know, well, that's it. It's never going to change yeah. or I want change now. And I, and I do. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so I certainly don't, I don't want to hear a story like that ever. I don't want it to be one of my kids. I don't want it to be one of my friends. No. Um, I mean, I, I actually at night still turn my phone, put my phone on silence because I'm scared I'm going to fall home. Now, how crazy is that? Like I can stop something from happening by having my phone on silence. I actually still do that every night because I'm scared. I have a 36 year old son who's a veteran. He was a medic in Afghanistan. He's a black man who has PTSD. He lives in Los Angeles. I can't, you know, he's not a baby anymore. Yeah. You know, but I know there's times where situations happen. I hope and pray that I have literally trained and educated him in what we've done so that he can, you know, handle it. But we just don't know. Yes. Don't. You're right. You're right. And in the midst of the not knowing, then we do our best. And oh, I, I think I, I actually had um, a, a similar conversation as we were kind of trying to come up with what we were going to do for our kids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and talking to a friend who's a police officer mm -hmm. and who <laughs> we have children who have special needs. So mm -hmm. like you said, you have a son who has PTSD. I mean, it adds another layer, you know, yeah. how will my child or grown child, how mm -hmm. will my loved one respond if the police are here, if yeah. something happens, if a car accident happens, if, how will they respond? Mm -hmm. Um, and then how will that response be met? Um, exactly. Exactly. you know, and for us, we have children who don't necessarily have the ability to communicate in the moment mm -hmm. um, quickly and precisely and with, um, you know, and, uh, with a, a non-threatening tone with, a, yeah. I mean, you have kids who yeah. might go zero to 60 and they might be safe to drive a car. So mm -hmm. as we're preparing for, you know, how will my child who shouldn't be kept from driving, who shouldn't be kept from interacting with people, how will they communicate with people in a moment where they're triggered, in a moment yeah. where they don't know to ask for a lawyer, um, yeah. you know, or whatever, you know, they don't know um, what their rights are mm -hmm. or how to access those in their brain. We know that when we yeah. experience trauma, we may have all that information, but we can't access that information. Exactly. And in, in such a quick setting um you know i always say philando is the the use case for someone who did nothing wrong mm. polite he pulled over right yeah he was yes yes sir um yeah. whatever he said the thing that happened is that when when the officer asked for his identification <laughs> philando said sir i must tell you i have a firearm i'm licensed to carry I have never in my lifetime heard of any uh, driver with a seatbelt on and a child in the back pull a gun out and shoot an officer. Like, right. How right. ridiculous is that? Yes. Um, so the fact that Yanez felt that he was threatened makes no sense at all. Um, yeah. And that's what happened. And Philando's last words before he, um, his wife, uh, his mom says, lost his constitutional right to live were mm. I wasn't reaching. <clears throat> Didn't know that when I created not reaching. Wow. Like we had all of these things that just came together. Um, tragedy brought me and Valerie together mm -hmm. to, to do these things that we are doing. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that we're doing is we're, we're creating training 
So we're actually, we partnered with HTC and a company called Birdie, and we are creating virtual reality traffic stop trainings for student drivers. So we should be in production by January. Excited about that. So students in the classroom will go through a traffic stop without ever being on the road. I think that's incredible. I I do. That really is. I know. That that is really, I know. I sit there like, what? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 and I guess that's what I'm saying. It's it's the the I'm going to fix everything or the I'm going to throw my hands up and give up. But neither one of those works. It's nope. the, the steps, right? Yep. I yep. I think about um, you know, gosh, I just sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off. <laughs> no, 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 no. I no, you know, I that's what. In the beginning, when I said we just try to have an organic conversation, yeah, yeah. Um, very often I'm I'm not I'm not going to channel Oprah in any interview ever. Yeah. She's like the right thing to say next, and I'm always like, wow, I'd never thought about that. No, that <laughs> is perfectly fine. I just thought I needed to put that in there. Because, yes, uh, I the fact that we have to train, and we're and we're going to create yeah. scenarios, not just the. Yes. Similar, you know, just a regular traffic stop. What goes wrong in a traffic stop? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those who have disabilities, how to yes. handle them. You know, we, we're looking at all of those. There'll be different modules. Um, and we're just really grateful that HTC saw the vision. Um, okay. Next to Oculus, Too there's cool. HTC. HTC is amazing. They have five Focus 3 headsets. Look them up. I'm telling you, if that okay. is not an immersive experience, oh, my goodness. I've been on top of buildings thinking I'm going to fall. Oh, I'm right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what am I doing here? I'm like right here. But that will give them that immersive experience without being on the road. So yes. So good. I, I think about, so, you know, both of my daughters have um, had to use the not reaching and I mm-hmm. have used it because that's where our stuff yeah. is. And even though mm-hmm. I wasn't the original yeah. and I still quite frankly have not had a concern being pulled mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. Um I do very much realize the difference in and yeah. what has happened when I'm pulled over and and when potentially one of my children or one of my friends is pulled over. Like I said, I've only been pulled yeah. over once in my lifetime. My husband's been pulled over many, many times. Yeah. My son's mm-hmm. been pulled over many, many times. So for well, even I have for been me, pulled over yeah. many times. Um <laughs> I haven't. Me, I that was my first time. I have never oh. I must be the greatest driver in the history of driving. Good for you. That's all I need <laughs> I to say. One of those. Kristen like, has a target. Know. She has a target on her back. Like. I literally have a target. It'll be something yep. like my headlight went out. Um, <laughs> I turned right on a red at a stop that used you used to be allowed to do that. I've yeah. lived here 20 years. And the years, sign you know? was really small. Real like it, it was, was in the car with me. You literally could not see and it. And I like, mean, it. it is guaranteed. But even as I say that, mm-hmm. um, I am fully aware that there's a difference for me. Mm-hmm. I have honestly always just felt like, well, this is an aggravation. I never get a warning. I always get a ticket. Um, yeah. you know, but to me, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. here's my ticket. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to go to traffic safety school. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. Wow. However, um, both my daughters and I have, have been pulled over with not reaching. Mm-hmm. Inside of our pouch, we added an extra document that says, well, we have two extra documents because um, we don't look like our daughters Mm -hmm. uh, and our immediate thought, and we own the cars. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our immediate thought was, what if one of our daughters gets pulled over and the car belongs to a white man? Exactly. Um, Oh, gosh. That's right. Yeah. Um, in the yeah. pouch is a notarized form that says that our daughters have permission to drive this car. Yeah. With Very smart. Very smart. Their license, his license, my license for the car that's mm-hmm. registered to me. Yeah. Secondly, we have a document that we put in there for um, our children who have difficulty with communicating. And mm-hmm. it's a, a form that we got through um, what is formerly known as NOFAS, which is now um, in oh, Indiana, it's... it's called the Indiana... Alliance for Prenatal Substance Exposure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The form basically says I have a disability and Mm -hmm. I cannot speak to Mm -hmm. anyone (laughs) without my parent Mm -hmm. present. Um, And so we've added that in there and it it says a little bit more. It says, you know, I may have difficulty communicating. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Which is why I created the autism pouch. Yes. You know, the death pouch, Um, you know, the, you know, all these different ones, because I kept getting calls and emails saying, Hey, what about this? What about that? And I was like, wow, this just shows that, you know, people want that communication to be readily available. So the officer knows exactly what's going on. Yes. What am I talking to it? Is this a disrespectful person or is this a person who can't think of the words to say? Exactly. Um, For sure. Yeah. Uh, So that's, that's really the autism hasn't really taken off. And I, you know, I'm just the one person trying to do it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I need to really um, actually work down the street from the autism off the the headquarters. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I don't go there, Um, you know, and just give them some pouches because I think it's, you know, as you know, I have, I have relatives who have autism, you know, Asperger's um, and, you know, sometimes you, you know, you, you, you don't know that they're not being disrespectful. You know, it's just who they are. They, you know, they can't communicate the way most people do. And just think about the people who don't have problems communicating or having problems communicating. Absolutely. So why, you know, then we add this extra layer, you know, so, you know, it's all about the the communication. Yes. And if it's nonverbal, at least the officer can, oh, he's autistic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me change my approach, you know? Yeah. So, oh, he's deaf. He can't hear me, you know? Okay, well, that's an issue, you know? Now yeah. medical marijuana licenses, like. Yes, yes. I mean, and you know? and I think that it's the, um, I, I think what I love about the solution or the resource mm-hmm. is that everything is in this one little pocket. It's yeah. on a magnet. It's yep. attached to, you know, my air vent. Um, the magnet doesn't fall off. It's never falls magnet, off, but it, you know, it's, it's there. Um, I did have one child that kept taking it off and I'm like <laughs> your air from a different vent. This is, well, my- that's what someone, I remember someone said to me, well, you know, it's blocking my air. And I said, you know, you'll air circulates. <laughs> like air circulates, you'll be fine. You're not, you know, you're not going to sweat to death or anything. Right. Like so, but, you know, but, you know, when, when things, look, there's always going to be things that people have to say sure, about something, sure. you know, I take it with a grain of salt and yeah. stride, you know, it is what it is, you know, but, yeah. um, um, but, you know, the most important part is the fact that whoever is that driver that is communicating. Um, so, um, I even have, and I should send you, make sure you give me your information. I have a sticker that says on the back that, you know, I'm not reaching, I'm not reaching sticker be placed in the back of your car. I love that. Yeah. And I, I, I love the idea of multiple ways to communicate Mm -hmm. what it is. You Mm -hmm. know, I'm trying to stay safe. I'm, I'm trying to. We're just, my husband said, don't hold court on the side of the road, live to see another day. I love that saying. I love that because, you know, there's always, always the person that wants to go with, you know, back and forth. I guess it's just not that, you know, you know, it's not the time, right. you know, right. listen to what they have to say. Well, at the end of the day, they are officers, <laughs> you know, you have to obey their commands, whether you like it or not, you know, and the best way to do that is to be as respectful as you can. There's no use you cussing out a, a police officer. What does sure. that do? Sure. You know, and that, that also deals with mental health. You know, um, last yes. week we held a, um, we're actually working with a company called XR Health and they provide mental health therapy through VR. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. So we did a use case with an officer in Paso Robles, California, where she went through a 90 day trial period with the, uh, with XR Health and their therapist. So imagine, um, you know, you, you know, you're having anxiety or some issues that you want therapy. And, you know, you work at a law enforcement uh, depart- police department, you don't want people seeing you going in and out of places because you want to keep it private. Well, you can sure. do it from your own home. So what happens is you call XR Health, they get you in touch with the clinician, the clinician meets with you and comes up with a plan of action. They send you the headsets. You do everything through the VR headsets. It's immersive. Like, it's amazing. And yeah. it's covered by insurance. 
Yeah. The best kept secret. So we call it happy cop, happy stop. So if we can make them happy, I'm sure we can, you know, have that transferred to those who are, you know, in the driver's seat. So we're we're working with law enforcement, but we're also going to work with um, the community because our community is traumatized. You yeah. know, think about some of these mothers who have lost their sons or daughters to traffic, just a basic traffic stop. Right. They've never had therapy. Right. Never. You know, so here's a way now that we can bring that into the picture. So we're we're doing more than the pouch. You know, it, it's so yeah. funny because yeah. sometimes I forget about the pouch. Now, when I get in my car, the first thing I do is put my pouch on. Yeah. It, it's, it's just like putting on a seatbelt. It's muscle memory. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what we want to teach in the VR training too. use the pouch. Yeah. You know, I think that's great. I know we practiced with our kids at home. Well, Mm -hmm. my kids had to see me get pulled over for literally everything. Yes. They're like, oh, we know what to do in a traffic stop. Uh, Yeah. um, Yeah. Right. They're like, okay, be polite. Say, I'm sorry. (laughs) For whatever yep. thing you did. There you go. Um, there it is. <laughs> right. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, when it happened to our kids, um, you know, we had practiced being on FaceTime with them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, FaceTime us. We have cameras in the car. FaceTime mm-hmm. us and point the camera toward mm-hmm. the officer. Um, but we we have a separate camera besides FaceTime. Mm-hmm. And I was on the phone with, um, the second daughter who just got pulled over not that long ago. Mm. And, um, you know, and she just, she has her, she has me on FaceTime. She's super Mm -hmm. chill kid, which Mm -hmm. is good. She channels that everywhere, but I'm panicking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't do anything. Don't say anything. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. And she's like, okay, mom, I'm okay. It's all right. I don't, I wasn't speeding. I don't know why I'm getting pulled over. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was night and her headlight was out oh, um, oh, okay. and it really was out, <laughs> but <laughs> all that to say, you know, we had actually practiced that when they were much younger, she's now 20 years old mm-hmm. and, um, she had FaceTime, she had the camera, um, mm-hmm. and she had her hands on the steering wheel and the officer, she gave him permission to get the pouch and mm-hmm. I can hear all of this. And his response was, Oh, this is nice. <laughs> I mean, that honestly, yeah. that was his response to it was like, mm-hmm. Oh, look, all your stuff is in this plastic pouch yeah. and you're not climbing under the seats trying to find stuff. Yeah. yeah. His response I mean, to that was really positive. Yeah. Very um, positive. And, and actually more law enforcement, the police departments are actually taking the pouch and putting their logo on. So I'm not married to the not reaching logo. I don't care. You know, you can put your mm. picture on it if you want. Um, but, you know, police departments have ordered them specifically for their jurisdiction and they're giving them to, to um, drivers. Wow. That kind of gave wow. me chills. I, I yeah. think that that's great. Yeah. And, and I think that as we take those steps, you know, those tiny steps, those are the things that will hopefully change the yeah. culture as a whole. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate that you said happy cop, happy stop. Um, but know. you know, <laughs> that's a funny thing. And they like that by the way. Right. Well, I mean, I think that's cute. Like so far. Right. Yeah, right. I, I, a few I weeks ago cute. I was sitting on the couch and I, I, I must've been dozing off and I woke up and I was like, what do you think about happy cop, happy stop? And my husband's always like, okay, here she goes again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's a good one. And then yeah. <laughs> I, I do think so. You know, and when we talked to our friend um, who it, who is an officer and also um, raising a child who has autism. So mm. all these things are marinating for him too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's one thing when my child with autism is in elementary school and I'm a police officer and I'm in the community and I know what's happening, but my child is in elementary school. They yeah. have their special education teacher. Um, so when we went to him and we said, gosh, we've got some questions, like how can mm-hmm. we prepare our children, um, you know, just to be, to have interactions with police mm-hmm. officers, it's, it's going to happen, whether that's in yeah. the community or, mm-hmm. um, or in a mental health crisis, you know, what are some things that we can be yeah. doing? And, um, you know, he had some insight into that and, mm-hmm. you know, just one as a dad, um, but two being on a police force where, he said, you know, sometimes we have the older officers that don't want to do the training. Mm-hmm. They, they don't, they're old. They, they've been there. They've done that. It's worked for them. They don't want yep. the, the new training. Yeah. And then you have the young officers who are quite frankly, just young. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're pulled a lot of, 
energy and right. aggression. So even without, yeah, even without an intent to harm someone, you do have, you know, some of those extremes mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's going to take a while to change that culture. So I, yeah. I love that there yeah. are certain steps along the way to provide, um, you know, again, I, I, I hadn't, I've actually been just sitting here for years feeling angry that life isn't safe. Um, and I, I'm, you know, you've got my wheels turning here too, about the fact that of, of course, law enforcement need mm-hmm. therapy and there's Absolutely. a culture of not wanting to get therapy. Exactly. So. I think I had probably, oh my gosh, I had so many different police departments at this training. Yeah. Um, and they actually did a live demo um, and it changed the whole outlook. Like you can do this and no one knows you're doing it. And, you know, the way she yeah. described what she's go, what she's, because she's a detective. She's seeing all the worst of everything. Yeah. And the fact that she goes home and one day her, she went home and her son was like, mom, why are you so angry? And she was like, I'm not angry. But, you know, mm-hmm. he could sense, you know. So now yeah. she goes and goes into another room and said, mommy's going to therapy right now. And she puts her headsets on and meets with her clinician. Um, you know, they have a set time and it's amazing, you know, and it was so funny because I went on HTC's website and it's like, who do they partner with? You know, and I'm looking through and I'm like, wait a minute, that sort of health sounds great. So I get on LinkedIn and contact the founder and he called, he, he responds immediately. That's what happened with HTC. I was one day, I, well, who's the president of HTC? I yeah. find out and he's on LinkedIn, Dan O'Brien. I sent him a message. <laughs> <laughs> he responds 30 minutes later. And we have been, in, you know, working together for almost a year and a half. And it's like, you know, you sometimes you think because people are here that they won't talk to people here. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah. Because yeah. he had, a, at the particular time, his son was just, had just started driving. And he had concerns. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're parents, right? We want to, we want, we want all our kids to be safe. I don't care what color you are. We want our kids to be safe. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, as much as I started out because of a black man who was murdered, it didn't, yeah. it's morphed into totally something different. I believe that if we can teach our newest drivers the proper procedures at the beginning, mm-hmm. the proactive part, then there won't be reactive situations. Mm-hmm. Wow. That that's you know, that's the mindset. So I am really and I'm I am I have a granddaughter who's just she'll be 18 in a few weeks. She just started driving. Yeah. You know, now, a few weeks ago, I called her and I hear this ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, what is that? She's like, oh, I'm in the car. I can't find my, can't find it. And I was like, well, why are you talking to me? She mm-hmm. said, oh, I, I use the phone. I was like, no. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's stop there right now. I said, I am a seasoned driver and I rarely use my phone when I'm Right. Driving. And I said, it's about, you know, being able to, you know, react to all situations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, so we got to teach them, don't because it's the popular thing to do, put yeah. your phone on silent when you drive. Well, You're not a brain surgeon. FaceTiming. That's yes. the thing. They FaceTime while they drive. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes. We got to remind everyone driving is a privilege. It is yeah. not a right. It is not yeah. a right. It's and I think true. that we, we need to have that conversation more and more um, at the onset um, of their driving to know that you can lose this privilege. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 it is a privilege. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, it is a privilege. And 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 you know, seeing that that was something she was getting ready to start. And I told her, I said, call me when you get home. Yeah. She was hanging up. She never called me. So she, I guess she was angry. I don't care. Yeah. That's okay. um, <laughs> yeah I, did, I don't care. That's okay. Um, but I need to teach you the right way because you're learning the wrong way. And those behaviors will be what happens when you're out there on that road and you, you're not, you're not ready for it. You, you're in this reactive mode because you've been distracted. Mm. Yeah. That's you're true. reactive because of the distractions. Yeah. You know? I mean, sometimes I'm listening to music going down the road and I'll blast my music. And I'm like, oh, yes. Hold on. Let me, let me bring this down. And yeah. I'm always situational awareness. I live, in, in this area, this traffic is horrendous. I've never seen people drive as, as poorly here than I've ever seen. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's the worst. I mean, is the worst. My husband is like cursing every day on the road. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm like, like Indianapolis. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be aware of your surroundings and be ready 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like, you know, you got to hop in, hop out. You got to be, you know, no one believes. You remember it was like, what, two, three car lengths? Oh, yes. That's gone. Oh. Yeah. The amount of time somebody is like laying on the horn yeah. and I'm like, I'm giving my assured clear yeah. distance because I and, learned that in driver's head. And we have to teach. And I believe the next biggest thing I want to really hone in on is this road rage. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. This is yeah. this is a killer. Yeah. You know, not being able yeah. to handle a situation because someone cuts you off. Who cares? Yeah. Like, who yeah. really cares if somebody cuts you off? As long as my car doesn't get hit, and even then, I have insurance. So mm-hmm. all these yes. things are where, in my mind, or just like that, there's no way I'm going to lose my cold over something. Oh yeah. So everybody is on. Everybody has gone through this transition with COVID, and that just everyone's angry. Yeah. Yeah. That's and true. I think, given quite a bit of permission online to express mm-hmm. yeah significance amounts of anger and opinions yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and i do see a difference and yeah. and that just that puts us at risk everywhere but that puts yeah. us at risk on the road um especially especially you know, on the road yeah. and i think that you know as adults as parents as grandparents we have to show them through our driving history how we handle and yeah. react because if they see us react, then they'll want to think that's okay to react. Yes, I, I, and I think that you've you've said this quite a bit throughout um, our conversation. Uh, this idea of assuming the best in others—that um, you know, the other people on the road are human. The officer that pulls you over is a human. Um, mm-hmm. Is it is it possible that that person is not a good person? Absolutely. Oh, Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, how do we interact with humans? And when we assume the best in the other person, um, you know, man, yeah. that, that doesn't end up ruining our day. I, it really doesn't. I mean, and I've not, I have, I, I was never this type of person. Like I was always reactionary. Um, yeah. but one day I changed that because I realized yeah. it didn't work. Yeah. And all, yeah. it did, all it did was frustrate me and I would get headaches. I used to get migraine headaches like three times a week. And I don't get migraine headaches. It's yeah. just, you know, I live in the moment. This is what I'm here to do. This is what we should do. And I'll look at a situation now and, and weigh it and determine how I want to deal with it. Because every every way I deal with something will have, a, have significance and consequences. That's yeah. kind of where I live. So yeah. I might be on the road and I might put my hand on that, that um, horn. And somebody might get out of the car and shoot me. Well, we could have avoided all of this. Yeah. 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 We yeah. could have avoided it. And we have to teach our young students. Yes. The horn, that's not what the horn is for. <laughs> and it, and it, it does take, you know, I know kids will roll your eyes when you say this to them, but it does take the stronger person to do the right thing. And no one wants it to is that. the bigger thing to do. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just, you know, I, I found I've I have found that the closer I'm getting close to 50 oh, and the man. older <laughs> the older I get the older I get and our listeners the, are not looking at Jackie right now yeah. but I mean Jackie if you told me you were 35 I would be like yeah absolutely oh, you're very kind I'll be seriously <laughs> though in a couple weeks <laughs> but but I you know the 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 fact is is that I I I feel like the older I get the I mean over the last you know 10 years or so mm-hmm. I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't have the energy to get so yeah, angry <laughs> at things, but, but I but oh. just today I was having a conversation with one of my sons who was all amped up uh, about what this kid was doing in his school and he was how, even at school today. how, um, they're, you know, <laughs> they're probably going to end up fighting. And I'm, and I finally just said, Hey, what? do you think that maybe, yeah. um, deciding to just, you know, live at peace would be a better way to go? Mm-hmm. No. And I'm like, yeah, but that sounds like you're, it sounds like number one, it's going to be a big waste of energy for you. But then number two, you're going to end up in trouble. Consequences. You could end up not just suspended. You could be expelled. You could be, you know, if you hurt someone, you could go to jail. Someone hurt someone. And and always for me, when I have these conversations, because I talk, I call it talking someone off the ledge. Yeah. 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 That's Um, exactly what it is. Always stay calm. Someone, you know, you, you wait a minute, give them a chance to 
get all that out, and then you start to give them scenarios. And I've learned that that has helped quite a bit with some of the people that I love who gets amped really quickly. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and they don't like it, but it kind of makes them think a little bit more, you know, before doing these things. And see, and especially with young boys, you know, if somebody starts something, they want to finish it. You know, and we did that in high school, but there right. were not, there weren't guns then. They were just, yeah. yeah, right. So now we are in a different era where people will kill you because they don't understand there's no reset button. This is not a game. Yeah. Right? This is not one of the video games where you can hit reset and start that over. Yeah. You take lives now. So we have to be very careful. I would also um, love to introduce your son if he's having these things to the XR Health. Yeah, because it's not just for it's for everybody. It's not yeah. it's not for it's for everybody. It's amazing. I can I can't say enough. I get nothing for it because everybody's yeah. like, "What do you get for this?" Nothing. Nothing. I get, <laughs> yeah. The only thing I get for it from from it is the fact that I know that people are trying to get healthy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all yeah. I want. I just want to know that this person made it by putting that on and dealing with the clinician. They yeah. thought yeah. of a different way to handle something. Yeah, that's all. You yeah. know, I because, love it. You know, these, these, these poor kids, I feel so bad for. I wouldn't want to be a kid for anything. I'm happy I totally at agree. Yes. Yeah. I'm happy at 58 because I don't know how I could deal with some of these things now. Um, yeah. We live right outside DC. I mean, if I don't hear, if I hear another teen murder somebody, I, know. I'm, I'm, I don't know what else to do. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, so I know we got a little bit off the track of what. We no, that's, no, it's all it's been great. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I yeah. think that was the you know, as we were deciding, okay, like, what do we do next? We know what's our next series. And when we talked about resources, we could probably do resources for the next five oh, years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> because, but that's, you know, that's what people are looking for. And I think that yeah. our listeners are going to resonate with everything that you said. Yeah. Um, we're all looking you know, for solutions. We, yeah. look, we all look, why don't we get along? I know the Rodney King thing is like, you know, you've said it over and over, but yeah, well, can we all just get along? Right. I don't, I don't, True. you don't have to like me, but you can respect me. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. just that piece of respect, yeah. you know, I, I think that's right. I'm, I'm not everybody's cup of tea and that's okay. Um, I already know I'm not, but oh, uh, and I'm fine with that too. I was gonna say I'm okay with that. I'm okay. <laughs> Actually, with that. this not- interview stopped me from sending an email back to somebody. So oh, no. thank you. I'm pausing. <laughs> I was like, I maybe, maybe I'm pausing a minute, <laughs> and I'll. I'm I'll listening to a it. podcast on NPR, uh-huh. and I, I'm listening to it every. I've listened to it over and over again. It's transformational, mm-hmm. and it's um, Jay Williams has a podcast. And his guest was Scooter Braun. Find it and listen to it. I listen. I to will. It I've actually listened day. to that podcast. I'm going to look for that. Oh, also. I love it. That's like, Jay, interesting. Yeah. It, he, what an interesting he has, guest. He has gone through such a transformation in his life. And hearing some of the things he says literally almost brings me to tears every day. And it makes me feel better. And it makes me a better person. Listen yeah. to that. I'm telling you, every day I hear another nugget that just transforms me. Yeah. I just, so, I, I'm saying that to you so you don't yeah. send that email. Okay. <laughs> don't send for it. Or, or, or a different version of the email. I, let's say. I, let's or, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's the other thing. I mean, f- uh, find ways to filter through what it is you're thinking yeah. and handle yeah. it differently. And uh, that's, it. that's, that's, that's it. my typical go to is to, yeah. well, I'm a writer. Um, Mike and I are both writers. Oh, great. And, um, you know, so I write out, you know, a very carefully worded um, and usually oh, yeah. cutting email to someone at my kid's school or whatever. <laughs> and I totally support my kid's school and I love my kid's school. Yeah. Of course. But it usually comes out like in the, the 10 paragraph explanation <laughs> of why, you know, whatever. It usually gets down to about three sentences, which say something like, <laughs> thank you day. for sharing that information yeah. with me. I'll there you go. That with my child. <laughs> you know, so. honestly, though, my favorite, uh, I used to be, so what I do now is we're, I, I, I do parent coaching through honestly adoption, but then I also am a, a marketing coach for another uh, company. Mm-hmm. So we deal with, you know, in that, in that, um, in mm-hmm. that respect, we deal with um, some, um, I wouldn't say I, they're, they can be really emotional because of their business, they're entrepreneurs, right? We understand yeah. that. 
Oh. But I remember years ago when I worked as a pastor in the church, oh. um, I would get, I, I remember um, there was one parent uh, in particular that literally wrote me an email that just went on and on and on <laughs> and on. You scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll. And I finally got to a point where I'm like, okay, there's two things going on here. I can feel it rising up in me like this, Uh this, this anger. Right. But Mm -hmm. then also I'm getting exhausted reading this. (laughs) And finally I just decided I hit reply. And I said, after, I mean, I'm talking, there had to have been over a thousand words in this email. It was insane. I got, I just wrote back. Okay. Thanks. (laughs) That's all they hate it. It's they like, hate it. They oh did. I'm like, I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction to never. Uh, yeah. I tell so. my husband all the time, never let anyone see you sweat. Yeah, mm. you can go That's in true. a house and you can say things to me, but that yes. person, don't you ever because yeah. once they have that just that in, it's over. Yeah, it's, it's over. True. funny. That's true. I, I used to be I was a church administrator for 17 years, so I feel your pain. You, yes. You saw some stuff, didn't you? That is a whole and heard some stuff. That is a whole different <laughs> podcast that we between that and either. being a grand jury court reporter in DC. Oh wow. Oh um, my goodness. Man. Yeah, I've seen it all. And seen yes. that trauma of yeah. seeing homicide after homicide, mm. after sexual assault, after wow. like any heinous felony you could come up with. Yeah. It got me to a point where I just became desensitized. Like yeah. I was like, okay, where's the next homicide? Like, mm. who does that? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that was too much. That was right. too much. So the trauma that I dealt with over two years of hundreds and hundreds of cases, yeah. um, I can only imagine what a prosecutor feels, like, right? What a yeah. defense attorney feels, what a judge feels like. We have so much work to do with mental health. Oh, uh, so uh, much work to do. Um, we are all traumatized. Yeah. We yeah. all, to some degree, for some yeah. reason. Yes. And we just all handle it differently. But um, you'll hear Scooter say, you know, he doesn't project his trauma to his children. That's mm-hmm. his trauma, not not his children. And I was like, oh, that's such an amazing line. Yeah. That, yeah. you know, the trauma, his parents projected trauma on him, but he has made a dis- conscious decision not to project that on his children. Mm. Wow. Wow. Like, oh, yeah. It's so amazing. I'm telling you, you're going to love that. You all love it. Pretty pulled it up. Yeah. I went on Twitter and I'm trying to get him to be my mentor. He hasn't answered yet. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I already pulled it up. I'll, I'll give that a listen too. Yeah. Well, I, I want to make sure that before we go, um, that you give our listeners where to find you, where to find (laughs) not reaching. And I also wanted to say you were on, oh, dang it. Tell us about the film that you were Oh, use of force, the policing of Black yes. America. Oh, okay, I forgot all about it. I move on. Like I move on. I don't know. Um, we had the 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 good fortune to be a part of a documentary called yeah. "Use of Force: The Policing of Black America," narrated by Chuck D from Public Enemy. Nice. Um, and we got a chance to talk about not reaching and why we, you know, created it. Um, we all actually are getting, he's getting ready to do like kind of where, where are they now? So we'll talk more about what we've done since then. Cause that was almost, even though it came out in January, we did that like a year and a half prior. Yeah. So it was yeah. like fairly new, but, um, producer is Carrie Grant. I call him black Carrie Grant because it's so <laughs> funny because his name is Carrie Grant. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's really educational. We had great people. We had uh, Glenn Kirshner, who's an analyst on MSNBC. Um, you'll see him. He does a he does a podcast called Justice Matters. He was actually one of the prosecuting attorneys mm-hmm. in my grand jury, and we became friends. Um, there is an officer named Sean Logicono who was fired from MPD um, because he really just followed what the culture of the police department did. Um, and just some really great people talking about use of force. Yeah. However, as much as we talk about it, it still makes me uncomfortable because I like to talk about the solution more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's Definitely. necessary to have a conversation, but let's have it and move on. Yeah. yeah. It's true. So that, you know, because we can get stuck there. And, you know, I I was on a pan I was on a panel a couple of days ago and I got so angry because it was like, but none of you are talking solutions. 
Mm -hmm. You're talking all this stuff and it sounds great and you sound very educated, but you almost don't sound educated because you're not talking about solutions. Yeah. You know, yeah, and you're true. talking about, you know, getting funding for this and that. And you're talk- using all the great buzzwords, right. and, you know, and I'm like, I don't want to talk to you guys anymore. Mm. Yeah, I just don't. I, I agree. Well, I, I think in terms of finding solutions, you are the kind of person who is clearly finding solutions. And right. um, I, I just thank you for taking the time to talk. Oh, to us. no, I love look. I'll talk to anybody. I, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I truly believe God places people in our lives for a reason. Absolutely. Um, I, I am a firm believer that I'm also a firm believer that everyone has a purpose and it's up to us to, I don't even want to, I don't even want to say birthday anymore. I call it purpose day. Yeah. That's the day you were born with a purpose and mm-hmm. it's up to you to find out what that is. And once you do, you better hit the ground running. I love, I love it. That. It's awesome. That's really beautiful. <laughs> Well, Jackie, thanks so much um, you. for our listeners. You can find all of this in the show notes. Yep. Um, before you go, oh. not reaching. It's not reaching.com for the okay. not reaching couch. And our uh, nonprofit is the Alliance for Safe Traffic Stops. So mm-hmm. that's um, www.alliance for safe traffic stops with an S dot org. So there's a lot of information out there. Um, we have great people on our board, one including is Valerie Castile, who is l- the most amazing person I've ever met. And I get to hear stories of Philando, and I feel like I've, I knew him all my life. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and, and she is she is a you, she's a sister from another mister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This has been just a great conversation. So valuable. And we yeah. will write all of that in the show notes too. Okay, so, sure. you know, if you're, if you're driving and listening to this podcast, don't, don't start don't to write right now. Don't it. write anything. It's all recorded. So, yeah. Please all recorded. don't. Don't yes. do that. Don't do that. You can check it out in the show notes. Thank you for listening to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, a resource courtesy of the Honestly Adoption Company. To learn more about us, visit www.honestlyadoption.com.